this is necessary. I, I spoil them rotten in here. Diet, they eat fruit, pieces of rotten, not rotten, fully totally ripe fruit. Crickets, mealworms. He loves crickets. That's great feeders and never had any problem with him eating. He eats right out of my hand. I just fed him a huge meal yesterday, so he probably won't today, but yeah. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, high humidity you want at least about sixty percent, but anywhere from sixty to it wouldn't go too higher than eighty. But you can do accomplish that with a little fogger. Those are like seven, eight dollar ones you can put in the water dish, about the size of a fifty cent coin, and they'll fog up the bottom of the tank. They look really cool and work well. With me, I have a ton of plants in here. I have the water down there. I have frog moss on the bottom and along the sides, growing really good by the way. So have plenty of hides, plenty of climbing branches and stuff. There, it keeps the humidity well. And plus, I have the top up here, which is almost a little rag, which is almost there. It works perfect for keeping the humidity just right. You can really tell if you don't have a hydrometer though, is you just want that little bit of fogging along the glass. That's how you can tell and stuff. If you're doing a 20 gallon tall like this, you have a big screen lid. I recommend. Velcroing the lid on, got clear vinyl, and just glued that. You can see like fab some kind of fabric glue or something like that I found in the closet. And stuff and you can see keep almost completely airtight. This tank still isn't humid enough for a toke, but I got a fogger coming in the mail. This is another perfect setup. And stuff. So he did they won't use the water dish, but it was really interesting yesterday. I put him on this fog right here. The feed and a cricket had fell into the water that I didn't see and he completely dove off, splashed around in there and came crawling back up onto that plant right there with the cricket in his mouth. It was funny. I mean, they're really cute personalities. They're really cool lizards. They get well tempered. I've been bitten like twice by him since I've had him, but they're they're so weak they're just their mouths are made just for eating little mealworms and pieces of really ripe fruit, so this does not hurt at all. Didn't even come close to breaking the skin. It just pretty much is holding your finger in his mouth. And stuff. Plants. You get, they are kind of. You want to be careful about toxic plants. You don't want them too toxic. They're not going to go around eating all the plants like an iguana or a bird or something like that would. Your mastix or something like that. So just kind of keep your eye out. Pothos is toxic and I have a ton of that in there. Just going to keep an eye on them. He's never taken a bite of any of the plants. Just watching with it. I have bird's nest fern right there. A ton of pothos. Little palm tree. If any of you guys have any recommendations on how to trim that, I'll be greatly appreciate it. Put in the comic section right down there. A little um, prayer plant. Some vegetated pothos. And just more pothos. And I already mentioned the frog moss down there. Branches, logs, all that stuff. I have a great stick. I have a custom background I made out of great stuff, spray foam, and some organic potting soil. I recommend using Eco Earth, like how I did on my Key Metallica tarantula tank. There she is. Well, young female. Looks a lot better. Let's see, keep nice and foggy with humidity. Down here, I use sand. It really doesn't matter whatever you want to use, but the potting soil doesn't really tend to grip it as well. Um, what else? Mission feeding, heat, no heat required. You want about 70 to 80 degrees throughout the entire tank and stuff. But if it does nighttime venture into the 60s occasionally, that's perfectly fine. As long as it doesn't get below 60, then you might want a small, small little heat source of some kind to keep them a little, a little bit warm. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not sure what else. It's about. All you think of the price range kind of goes up and down. At generally, going to be about thirty to forty dollars for a baby. You go to a Reptile Expo, you can probably find them for about twenty, ten, twenty, around in there, or fifteen, something like that. I don't know. Let me take this off again so I can kind of show you down inside the tank. Can't really see it too well, probably.
lot of them and stuff. I don't have a ready supplier that would buy them from me. So I really haven't messed around with breeding them, but it's very easy from what I heard. Just put them together and they'll do it. And stuff. Um, incubation. You don't need any kind of heated incubators or anything. You just put them in a put them in some perlite in a humid environment. The colder it is, the better. Not your fridge. You want about 60 degrees. That's about it for that. You do more, do more research because I'm kind of ignorant towards breeding. I've never really tried it out before. But yeah, 30 gallon. You can keep a trio in here. I only have one. Just because I don't got money to buy more. I'd have to get little babies and he might kill them. His little tiny baby would fit right inside of his mouth and stuff. Um, yeah, they're not like toke geckos. You'll never see them sitting on the glass. So you got to make sure you have a lot of cage furnishings. Like these plant, br plants, branches, they love these branches, moss, stuff for him to climb in and get under. But he's always on these branches or in that little cork tube. Yeah, if I think of anything else, I'll put it in the description. But yeah, that's about it. I'll get him the reptashi. But, dude, he seems to love it. I'm actually running lower now. But I feed him in crickets and mealworms. I feed him every week. I'll give him about five, give him as many crickets as he can eat. Probably about five or seven large crickets. I just feed him until he won't eat anymore. And then throughout the week, I'll give him a little bit of reptashi here and there. Maybe a couple times during the week. So he eats. He's good. You can tell he's nice and fat, but not overweight. So yeah. Calcium dust, if you want. I don't. I never really do that. It's not completely necessary. So I give him the reptashi, and that has a lot of calcium and stuff like that in it. But if you want. Yeah, that's right.